Perfect. My name is Larry Williams. I'm from Pasadena, California. This is the court where I grew up playing basketball. I got the name Bone Collector from a good friend of mine in New York by the name of David Seals. Uh, this name was given to me at legendary Rucker Park and it's traveled with me throughout the world. Dave woke up in the middle of the night, this is not a joke, and he said, hey, for what you've been doing to guys for the last three, four games, and I was making guys fall, hurt their fingers, pull muscles, he said, I got the perfect name for you. Bone collector. We are now at a park that I grew up playing at every day, uh, Villa Park. Uh, this this whole entire area of Pasadena is where I grew up. And Villa Street is where it's at. These are the stairs I used to run to work on my strength and athleticism. The run I ran these stairs so many times I don't even want to see them. But the basketball gym is right through these red doors, and we used to make sure we got a good workout session in before that by going through this red door where the weight room is. Growing up in Pasadena was a little rough because there's a lot of gang influence here. There's a lot of, you know, uh, things that distract you from your everyday life. It's rough out here. You can see my man over here sleep on the corner, just sleeping in the corner. And for me to get out of it, the only way for me to do that was for me to go to the court, do something, that would take my mind away from the street life. And I chose basketball as my way to do it. This is the first court I ever played on right here at Villa Park. Street ball was really big when I was young, but later on in the 2000s, it started to drop down. Because of that, I chose to keep the envelope open, so to speak, by pushing my genre of street ball. And currently, I, I'm touring the world, doing crash to courts, basketball clinics, and I'm very happy to announce that I've recently signed with a partnership with the NBA, where I'm actually training NBA players. And my next client will be Mike Conley Jr. Shout out to Big Mike, I'll see you this summer. More so than anything, it's teaching kids that you don't always have to grow up and be somebody, you were born somebody. It's all about the work you're putting in to lead you in those positions. Yeah, I'm getting older in age, and I've been playing for a long time, but the way I keep myself up to par is by treating my body like an actual temple. I treat it as good as I wanted to perform. So if I have to compete with the elite athletes, I need to train like the elite athletes. If the guys are doing three days, I should be doing three days. You know, I can't train an NBA player if I'm not actively involved in his actual career. So to keep yourself Active is what you should always be aiming towards if you want to make yourself better at this sport. Can't miss a workout. Impossible. I'm headed to the jump lab right here in my hometown in Pasadena to get this work in. And regardless of how I'm feeling, it's time to go to work. Childhood friend of mine, Coach Rico. We're about to go over the first warm up that I get into before I get a session started. So let's check it out. So basically, the pull ups with the, uh, with the leg raises is just activating that core at the same time, working out the biceps at the same time. The bone collector needs a lot of, a lot of balance, as you know, he deals with a lot of contact with people trying to guard him and reach and push him off balance. So. Every time me and Bone get started, we always focus on the core and we finish on core. Now we're moving on 
to the upper body to get the arms activated, ready to shoot, ready to release. But there's always these questions about what happens when an athlete's stiff when he's working out, the muscles are usually stiff, and my trainer will give you an idea of what you can do to keep yourself loose before you get back to your workout. I normally have the bone roll out, whether it's forearms, calves, wherever the stiffness or soreness might be, because I don't want to slow down his handles at all. I don't want to mess up his form at all. So I always have him use a foam roller in between workouts. Also, I hit him with the massage gun. Just keep him nice and loose, wherever he's sore at. I'm going to just get it as much as possible and get that soreness out of his arms or his legs and just continue our workout because I got to continue to push him and break his body down so he can come back stronger. After loosening the body up, tightening the core, we're gonna go into a row exercise he has me do to make sure that my arms and my body, all these muscles are tight and the quick twitch muscles are working. So we swap the regular weight bar out for the row bar because the bone can get different position grips on the bar. It's more comfortable on his shoulders. Let's put it back to my bone. Giving out work and breaking bones with a little chest. You gotta keep your chest nice and solid. Older, I just want to keep him just fast. He's still fast. Seven up. There we go. Two, three, light work. Four, one, two, three, four. And now it's time for the fun part of the course. Stay tuned. Starting with some ball handling them with the heavy ball, the heavy trainer, which is a three pound ball, which is going to trick the bone collector's muscle into moving faster, and his fast switch muscles are going to speed up with his handle. Let's get right into it. Let's do it. I'm gonna walk you through one of my most memorable moments in my street ball history. This was Dykeman, circa 2001, 2002. The stage is set. Everybody's already telling me that I'm not good enough. I'm not this, I'm not that. But me being who I am, I'm already up for the challenge. And New York is big on trash talk. And there was a guy at Dykeman by the name of Hollywood. He just wouldn't stop talking to me. He told me I wasn't good. He told me I was this, that, and the third. And he rushed up on me one play and he tipped the ball out of my hand. So I'm, I started clapping like, cool. And the referee got the ball and he actually threw the ball at me and it hit me. And then once, it, once he did that, I was already prepared for him, but he took it to another level for me. So the crowd is screaming, everybody's going crazy. They're wondering what's gonna happen. It looks like he's close to me. I throw it through his legs, his knee hits the ground, boom. He gets up, he kind of like recovers, and I can see him like a boxer, like I stumbled him already. So as soon as I found out that he was a little weak, I threw it through his legs, snatched it back, and he fell. They ran all over the court. They poured their drinks on him. It was the most insane thing I've ever been a part of in my life. If you even look at the footage, the game never ended. They just couldn't clear the court. The game never ended. I don't even remember what the score was. 
the most memorable moment in my street ball history. Playing this game for as long as I have, I try to make sure I dedicate my time to the kids that train with me. Right now, what we're about to get into, there's a lot of stations set up. There's three stations in particular, and we're working on these explosive movements, hand-eye coordination, and we're working on our being able to finish off of a strong crossover. Down, 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 down. Catch here. I'm gonna one dribble, cross, get on the outside of it, shot. 12-24. Nice. Come on, man, what you doing? What you doing, man? Woo! You should close out short. Why are you closing out so high? You understand? Next level, you close out on Paul George too high, you're gonna get dunked on. Good move. I like it. All right, wall sits. This is the, the drill is not okay. This is all defense. Sit in defense position. When I say sit, sit in defense position. First person's on defense. You have 10 possessions to stop me. You okay, buddy? Just recently, I was able to work on the NBA Live video game with James Harden, which was a lifetime dream for me because not only working with NBA players is great, but being on a game that you played as a child is life-changing for me. And now I'm able to relay that message to the kids. Anything is possible. I grew up playing a game that I'm now on. That whole experience was life-changing. And then also, I've been knowing James for so many years now. Being able to show him certain moves and see if he can figure them out was also great too, to bridge the gap, so to speak, between street ball and the NBA. The most hyped game I've ever played in New York was West versus East. Myself, Baron Davis, Gilbert Arenas, the game, uh, and, a few, and a long list of guys versus Skip to my Lou, Ali Moe, a whole lot of game, Kareem Reed. It was just Stefan Marbury. It was the most entertaining game I've ever been a part of. And a uh, big shout out to all those guys. It was a once in a lifetime experience. Now you guys are in for a treat. A lot of people don't know, I am a great character illustrator. I am great at drawing. And this is one of the first murals I've ever been a part of with painting. Don't judge me, I was only 11 or 12 years old when I did it, but take a look at this mural. And if you look real close, it's almost rubbed out, but you see the name Larry Williams. And I was a part of this mural. This was a big part of my life growing up. Uh, we used to come here every summer and just work on different pieces until it was done. Thanks for tuning in to A Day in a Life with Bone Collector. I really appreciate you for joining me. Big shout out to Ballers Life for having me. And remember, respect it or you will get collected. <laughs>